and I'm going to talk about shorting stocks. I'm going to talk about making six figures a year shorting stocks, and I'm going to do something different tonight. I'm going to talk about, uh, give my information and give my contact information and the information on the class that I teach here at the beginning. And then I'm going to switch right over just to talk the rest of the lecture in the next hour about charts and about shorts. So doing something different a little bit tonight. I'm going to go over the information at the beginning here, what I offer. If you want to learn my method, which, which is obviously shorting, I'm, I'm mostly short stocks in the equity market. And then I'm going to go teach. So we'll do a switch over here. So if everybody can see me, everybody's good. Again, I own my own company and I started my business back in the end of 2012. And I started trading though in 2008. And I, I went long stocks and I shorted stocks, but I found that I was making money, more money shorting and faster money shorting. So I really got into shorting stocks. And you can make really good money shorting stocks just simply because of the fact that stocks tend to drop in price faster than they rally. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. So if you'd like more information and want to contact me, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. And also, uh, Paul Lang works for me. I don't know if any of you know Paul. You can email him as well if you have questions or if you remember Paul. He's been around quite a while, and he is very good at gas as well. And if you have any questions, you can feel free to call me at 929-3200-GAP. And I uh, strongly urge any of you that want to follow me to go to my YouTube site here. You can follow me at any one of these social media sites. But I put a lot of videos on YouTube, and, and this lecture will be on YouTube later this evening as well. So my class, the one class that I teach, the main class that I teach, teaches my method. And I, I only do one thing, and that's what we're going to talk about tonight. I, I did a trade today and was done in a couple of minutes. So it's, it's very specific what I do, but it is very focused, and it allows me to be profitable consistently and, and focus on the day, usually only doing one stock symbol or one trade. So I do teach a class about once every four to six weeks. And it teaches my method. It's a Saturday and a Sunday. The class is July 16th and 17th, which is not this weekend, but the following weekend. And I teach my method on gaps, which I'm going to explain to you what a gap is when I bring up the charts for those of you that don't know. But for those of you that have never heard of a gap in our training, my class is based on a technical analysis in a chart. And if you've never traded before and you don't even know what technical analysis is, then we're going to go over that tonight too. Whenever, okay? It's looking at price direction, but it's looking at the gap itself, okay? So everything you need to learn to make money, you can learn in my two-day class. And like I said, it's July 16th and 17th. It's earnings season starting next week. So summer is actually a good time to trade my method and gap because there's third quarter earnings season. Companies report third quarter earnings in July and August. So it's a time that you can make money in the market. My class is online just like I'm talking online tonight. It's a full-on class starting Sunday 9 to 5. And the tuition is $49.99 and retakes are free. If you are interested, you can email me after the lecture tonight or tomorrow. And I'm offering a July 4th special, which I'm running through Friday. If you know you're interested, the class is $49.99, but I'm offering 20% off through Friday. The only time I'm going to do this this whole year. So for those of you that haven't watched me for a while, if you are ready to take it, you can save almost a thousand bucks, which is really, really nice. And uh, I'm just at the point now where you know, we're going into the summer. It's going to be a really, really good time to be in the training room with me. I had a nice solid call today, which I'm going to go over with you. And I've never been more focused on my trading than I am. It was it was uh, one of these periods of time you get into the period of the year, it's half the year is over in 2016, and you start to say, wait a minute, you know, I have certain goals. You look at yourself, you decide what you want to do. And if you are trading and not meeting your goals, you might want to learn my strategy. If you are not trading and not making enough money in your own career or wanting to change careers, you might want to look into trading the market. And for me, myself personally, you know, I, I started to do options this year. And earnings season is going to be a great time to do the options and the day trades. And then these are the other things that I offer as well. You can, you can feel free to look at this later, too. So, all right, let's get into the charts. I only have one hour to talk and teach tonight, so I'll try to, you know, cover up some basic information, a little bit of everything. So this is a chart, okay? It's a daily chart of ESPR. You go up here in the top hand quarter, that's the stock symbol. And I usually trade a different symbol every day. So I, I don't get up and trade like Apple every day or whatever, okay? I'm looking every morning for something new, okay? So this was a couple of days ago or last week or whenever it was, it was the 29th. 
Yeah, it was last week. And what happened is this stock closed. You see the square up there in the left-hand corner at 16.18. So that's when the stock closed. It rallied in the day, rallied, not quite a dollar. Okay, low was 15.25, almost a buck. And then it gapped down. Now, what is a gap? A gap is the difference between the close and the open. So the stock opened then on the next morning at 10.50. Somebody had emailed me a question, and I think people just don't understand. This is happening in the pre or post market. So it's not like you don't see this thing until it opens. Now, you see it before this happens, but the bottom line is this is a gap. A gap is the difference between the close and the open, and this is what happened here with the stock. But you see it before. So uh, my strategy looks for this one, like this jiggy here, this ESPR, which was last week, and I try to find the best stock to short. Now, where did you see it? You can see it here. Now, this is a 15 minute. Going all the way back, this was one that happened at night. So this is at nighttime. After 4 o'clock, the stock is trading. So this is live price action where the stock is gapping at night. This isn't on the live day. This is the post market. I don't trade this time frame, but this is when the gap is happening. Okay? So I see this, whether you see it at night or in the morning, and then I created a rating system, which is what my class is, to tell you that this is going to be either a long or a short. And this was a short, okay? And that's what we're really talking about today. So my rating system is based on the daily chart. Going back over here, there's a daily chart down here. You can see the days. And I look at it in the morning or at night, and I go through the 26 points. I created 26 points to determine if this rates well. And what does that mean? It means I'm looking for a 20-point rating. If I get 20 points or more, it's good to do it in the direction of the gap, which in the case of this was a short, okay? So I just want to show you here that it opened at 1050, low in the day was 958. So you could have gotten a buck out of this or a little bit more. And we'll look over the setup in a minute. But the point is that if you shorted this, you would have made money. And how would you have known? You would have known before 930 if you took my class. Okay. And that counts. Why? Because it sets up into the open, usually between 930 and 10. And that's when you can take the trade. So the benefit of my system is that you can trade and be done very quickly. But you don't have to wait and wait and wait and wait and wait for the setup. And actually, the longer I have to wait for the setup, the less chance there is that I'm even taking the trade at all because I don't like it the longer it takes to set up. And the longer something takes to set up, the more um, it has to do with the market. In fact, let's go look and see. I forget. What does the market do on the 29th? And when I say the market, I'm talking about the overall, um, either the QQQs or the SPY indexes, which are ETF. Let's just look at a SPY. So the 29th, okay, so here you see this was the same day as the ESPR. Let me blow it up. So the market rallied. This is the SPY. Okay, you see it up here in the ticker symbol? So the market rallied on the day. So you see, you can short. Even if the market's rallying, and actually we power trended this day, power trended to stay in the 29th, but what I'm saying is that you can make money shorting even if the overall market is higher. It doesn't matter. Sometimes when you get the market going down, though, you can get somebody to a bigger target, although I will tell you to get a dollar out of something that's like a $10 strike price is good. I mean, this is funny, funny to make money. Now, does anyone have any questions about anything before I go over more about shorting? Anyone have any questions? And again, I know everybody has a different uh, place that they come from in here of their information. There, Kathy has, Kathy can go over it. Now, let's just talk a little bit about why I like to short. Because they usually set up fast. And it's just common sense. It's the common sense that when panic sets into a stock, okay, which there was panic in this stock, that people will sell. So the selling creates the move down. When you're shorting, you're betting, okay, you're betting the stock price is lower. So you're taking the trade here, and the setup here actually was 1074. You shorted the stock at 1074, and it drops the red bars to pick the sell-off. Red is selling, green is the rally. So the price is dropping when it's red. So a short is you're betting the price is dropping. This is an advanced concept. A lot of people don't know how to short, and I found a lot of people that 
do short that our traders have no idea how to take the setup. But I, I teach us in the class, too, how to take the entry. And that's important because if you don't get in this thing here, you didn't, you didn't get it. It kind of pitter-pattered around here. You see it dropped a little bit. And it was like, eh, this was the money move in here where you take the train, and I'm very much like that when I take it. I just hit it, and you're out. And literally, you could have taken it and been out in one, two, three, four, five, six minutes. You could have stayed in it for seven or eight. So this is the benefit of shorting. The price drops fast. And you will have moves sometimes that move more than a dollar, way more than a dollar. But at this price point for this price of stock, it's actually a really good move. And a dollar is good. 25 cents, 50 cents is good in some stocks. I mean, that's real money, depending on your size. So again, it's going back to the concept of the common sense, which my method is based on a lot of common sense, actually. The common sense is that things fall fast when there's panic that comes into the stock. And again, shorting just means you're betting the price is going to go down. So if the stock is at $10, for example, and you short it, if it drops under the $10 number, you're up, okay? Similar if you bought something at $10 and the stock rallied, anything over the $10, you'd be up, okay? And we're focusing on the shorts today. And this is how you make money. And the amount of money that you make depends on the size. It's, it's really just about how many share size you take. So everybody has a different amount of money that they can risk, and that is up to you. You can ask me for recommendations, but the bottom line is you can make as much money as you possibly want, depending on the share size here. So the idea of making 100 grand a year or 200 grand a year or 300 grand a year only has to do with the difference of the size. The trade's the same. If you risk a dollar or you risk a thousand dollars, the trade is the same. The entry's the same. The stop is the same. The exit is the same. Okay. And there really wasn't any thinking in this at all because you see here, this just was red, red, red. Every once in a while, you'll get something, and I'll show you the one from today where it backs up a little bit into the move. But this was such a nice, just, it's just almost went completely down, like immediately. Just straight down. See it? So does anyone have any questions on this? Now, people also ask me about, you know, where to put in the stock. Okay. When I take a trade, I always use a hard stop. It's a limit order. Now, what does that mean? That means if the trade would fail, now it did in this case, but let's just say the trade would not work. You would have a limited loss. You would have a fixed loss. Now, what's the purpose of that? The purpose of that is you want to keep your losses low in trading. Every trade does not work. Okay. Most of the trains that I take of the gaps that rate 20 points or more work as short. And if they don't work the day of the gap, they usually follow through the next day. And that's something else we can look at tonight, too. But the bottom line is that you have to account for the fact that this may not work. If you're doing one trade a day, five days a week, okay, you should have very limited losses. I find that people that trade the market, one of the reasons they're not successful is because they don't use stops and don't limit their losses, and, and, or they overtrade, okay? I don't overtrade, and I also shut the room down very early. I mean, I, I really had the room open till 11 o'clock, but if I'm done trading and I'm done teaching, I may close the room at 10, 15, the live trading room that I have, okay? Because I don't want people to keep trading if we're up. You take the money, you're done. And if you take the trade and it doesn't work, you limit your losses. If you had one loss a week, which is actually a lot, okay, I don't have one loss every day a week, but there might be one day a week I don't trade, like Mondays are slow. And if you make money the other four days, okay, you are profitable. It's about the focus, okay? It's the focus of trying to find the best stock to short. And if it doesn't set up, by 10 o'clock, I'm not doing it. So I have rules, okay? And, and, and these are rules and things that I review in class as well, but it's really a very simple concept. Yeah, let's look at this old chart here, though. This actually looks lower. This actually looks a lot, lot lower, even still. Anyways, that was a good one. Does anyone have any questions about this? Okay. So the benefits of shorting is... Speed of the execution of the trade of the move, panic coming in that you get the sell-off. And the sell-off is profit if you take the trade and take it quickly. 
Okay. Now let's look at the one from today. Okay. This was today. It was AAL, this is American Airlines. Oops. Hold on. Today is six. Okay. So. Kathy, can everybody hear me? I just lost the whole system. All of a sudden, it just lost the whole system there. Can you hear me? That was weird. Oh, okay. All right, very good. Wonderful. Okay, so this was today. So, again, we're reviewing it. What did you do? You got up in the morning, you looked at this. You would know here is in the morning. All of this is the pre-market trading of AAL. It's all here, 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 okay? So you can look at this way before. You could have looked at this at 7.54 a.m. You had a good hour and a half to figure out if you wanted to do anything with this at all. Now, let me take this off. Again, the preparation, which is important. So what did I want this to do? I wanted it to hold $28. I said today in the room, this doesn't hold $28, I'm not shorting it. Because it wasn't an amazing gap, but I knew the area that I wanted it to hold, to short. I knew how it had to set up, and I also knew it had to set up fairly quickly, which it did. Stuck open, rally, touch exactly on $28. Look at that. The highest bar here at 931 is what? 28 bucks. Didn't get over it. So this is pressure on the stock. It's called resistance, but it's basically pressure. It's institutional pressure, which is making this feeling here, just saying, I'm not letting the stock go over this number here. At least not for the morning, which is all I care about. Because remember, I only trade the morning. So then I did the short. Then it dropped, and I actually got out of this really quick. I, I said to everyone, we're scalping this today because it's not amazing. But the fact is it actually went almost to the target. Target today was 27 bucks. It came down to 27.12. You could have stayed in it, actually. You would have been in it for an hour, which is a long time for me. But if you stayed in the trade until 10.30, you could have got it all the way down. This was really nice. I got out of it quick. I wanted to scalp it today. That was my plan of action. I follow my plan of action. But even if you follow this just into 9.45, you got it down to 27.20. Do you see this here? So low in the day was 27.10. Low in the morning was what? 27.20. See, it just doesn't even pay to, to, to trade that long. If you had held this till 10.30, you would have had a rally back and made 10 more cents. So this is what you want to do. Whether you get out here or here or here or here, it doesn't even matter. And we were talking about this the other week. The idea is to get the right pick, which is AAL. Get the right pick, get the right entry, take it, get the stop in, boom. You want to get the sell-off. It's a straight sell-off. 90-some percent of the time when I pick something and take the entry and it goes, it goes right away, sells off right away, unless the trade fails, okay, which, which does not happen that often for me. But you get the move back, so you get the sell-off. And this is the money. And then it doesn't matter really where you get out. But the point is that the sell-off happens very, very quick into the open. Again, it's the common sense. It's the common sense method of this seeing it. And you are prepared before the open to see this because you saw it, like I said, at 8 o'clock in the morning. And I do call the trains in live time in the live trading room. I do do that for people. I say the entry and the stop. So if you're there in the room and you want to do it with me, you can. Okay? Anyone have any questions? You have to take my gap class, though, in order to be in the room to get my call because I think that everybody has to know how to do this, and these trains set up very fast. And so you do have to know what to do, how to size yourself, and what to do it. So let's talk about that next for the sizing. We kind of were talking about that before, but let's, let's talk about that again. Okay, so say you did this here today, and I usually rough it, okay? Exact, exact entry in here was 78. 78 by 28.10. So again, roughing it, 30 cents. 
Or if you hit it a little bit late, it's 75, 35 cents. So let's rough it and say approximately 30 cents. So if you took a thousand shares, and I'm going to write this in the room, times 30 cents equals 300 bucks. So your risk is 300 bucks. Now, what if you took 2,000 shares? times 30 cents. Again, the risk is 30 cents. You'd be risking what? 600 bucks. What if you took 3,000 shares times 30 cents equals 900 bucks? Now, the trade worked, okay? Say you got out of it. <laughs> Kathy says I'm good. This is, this is, you don't even need to calculate or do this, Kathy. Say you got out of it and you made 25 cents. You got out the first drop down. First target really was 27.50. Say you got out of it, made 25 cents. Okay. In the first example, the thousand shares, you would have made what? $250. In the second example, with 2,000 shares, you would have made 500 bucks. And the third example, 3,000 shares, you would have made $750. This is not some huge, huge move to get out of this right here in three minutes. If you held this all the way down, okay, which I did not do, but I'm telling you, if you did, you made more. But this was not some amazing gap, so I scalped it. So I'm saying if you, if you just had a scalp, okay, like this every day, not even looking to hold to the target, not even doing anything like looking for the target, okay, you see how you can you can really you can make money, okay? But it has to do with the share size. If you don't take enough share size, you can't get to the number. You can't get to that that exact number that you're looking for. You need to try to take get to the size. How can you get to the size where you could risk six hundred bucks or nine hundred dollars even in a trade? You've got to prove to yourself that you could consistently do it and make money. If you risk a dollar every day for a year, from January till 1st to December 31st, or if you risk a thousand dollars in every trade for a year, your, your actual money that you would make by the end of the year would be far different, huge difference in the dollars and cents. But the actual trades would be the same. If two people took the exact trades and took every trade that I did in the room, what's the difference? How can one person make more? It's the sizing. But if you're someone that has not had success in the market and you are, you are afraid to take size, you got to prove to yourself that you can do it. And that's where the reigning system comes into effect. That's what I teach in the class, which is the 26 points. It gives me conviction to, to take trades without any fear to take the size. And when I don't have the fear to take the size, I'm not worried about losing because I know if I lose on Monday that I'll win on Tuesday and Wednesday or whatever the case may be. And, and very often I hold trades longer than this, but this was not an amazing gap today, so I'm just telling you. But even looking at 750 bucks a day, scalping, scalp, scalp, scalping, that still... If you, and I'm just roughing it out here, okay, five days a week is still $3,700 basically a, a, a week. That gets you to the numbers of making six figures a year. But it's the point that many people can't even get, they can't even risk a dollar doing this over and over and over and over and over again because they have no idea what to watch and they don't know where the entry is and they're scared. But people will risk two, 300 bucks in a trade you know, not having conviction, kind of throwing darts to the board. And you can't make any money consistently doing that, let alone six figures a year. You will lose. Many people, many people just don't understand how important it is to have the conviction. And for me, it's a daily chart. The daily chart gives me the conviction to do it. Now we have a question here. DNA is saying the size can depend on the stock price. Not the sizing doesn't depend on the stock price. Well, you have to look at your buying power. It doesn't depend. You have to look at the buying power. You can't take 
You can't take 3,000 shares of Disney, okay, if you don't have enough leverage or buying power in your account to do it. Again, you have to look at your buying power. This is different than the 30 cent risk. You are, uh, you are given access, which is leverage or buying power from the broker at you trade at. How much you get depends on the broker where you have your live account. You need to ask them. So it's more prevalent in expensive stocks, I find, that it's an issue for people if they can take the sizing. But the 30 cents position has nothing to do with um, the stock price. It's 30 cents times. Here, this is a good example. We'll just go over it. Let's do 27. I don't even know what the buying power was in this because I only figured out for expensive things. 27.78 times 3,000 is what? If you wanted to take 3,000 shares, let's just figure it out. Here's what you would have needed. This is a good, this is a good question. You would have needed to take 3,000 shares. Of this trade today in AAL, you would have needed $83,340 in buying power. What sense does that mean? It means you have an account with a broker. They give you leverage. It's not dollar for dollar. You don't need $83,340. If you have a retail account, you would probably get four to one, okay? Meaning if you have 20-some thousand, you would probably be able to take that trade. If you have an account at a prop place, you may get 10 to 1 or 20 to 1. You might have 8,000 some dollars with a prop place and been able to take that same trade and have 83 some thousand in buying power. So there's different types of brokerage accounts. You have to find out when you go to open an account how much money you need to put up to day trade actively and how much buying power you're going to get on the fund. You may need to look at that for your risk. Okay, so when you look at expensive stocks, which like I said, I usually don't figure out the buying power unless I have an expensive one. I was talking about Disney. Let's just go look at Disney. I haven't looked at this chart for a while. Look at Disney. Ooh, Disney rallied today. Okay. So let's say, well, let's say we wanted to short Disney because, again, we're talking about shorting. Let's say we wanted to short Disney back here on the 24th. This is the day, I think this fell the day that the market fell. Or maybe it was the alligator thing. Uh, okay, so Disney, let's say we wanted to short Disney on this day. Let's say we wanted to short it at 96 bucks. Okay, and I'm just making up a number here for Dan's question because he's asking about the stock price. You would, if you wanted to short a thousand shares of Disney at 96 bucks, how much buying power would you need? You would need 96,000 in buying power, not 96 grand, but 96,000 in buying power. But guess what? The stock might have been more than 30 cents because the stock price is more expensive. So you might not have been trying to take the share size in this as a short with a 30 cent risk. The risk might have been 60 cents. Do you know what I'm saying? Because usually stocks that are higher priced also have big stocks. So if your risk was $900, like in the 3,000 share position of the AAL, you, you would probably have a bigger stock. It wouldn't be 30 cents. It might be 60 cents. So if your risk is $900, you can only take 1,500 shares anyway. Follow me? Tell me if this makes sense. This is, this is stuff, though, that you need to talk to your broker about depending on where you trade. And let's go back to what were we doing? Okay, this one. Anyway, the point is, oh, this is what I was saying. Many, 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 many people, okay, just don't know how to replicate this. It's the replication, okay? It's the it's the replication. Boom. 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 Okay. I'm very good at finding these and doing it over and 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 over again. Okay. One of one something that I learned very early on, and I learned this very, very early on, and no one taught me it. No one at all, because no one even says this stuff out there because many educational places are trying to teach you everything under the sun and and send things till Sunday. I only do gas. Even the other things that I do, like the options, is based on my strategy on gas. 
Okay, and I don't do options every day, but I am doing some options. So everything is on the one strategy. That's it. Okay. And if you learn how to you do the points and find the directional bias of the gap, you'll you'll you can do it for options or day trades or swing trades or investments long term. But it's only one strategy. That's all that I do. Okay. So when when I, very early on, I realized that there was too many things to be looking at every day. And I found myself all over the place, all over the place and wanting to do a million different trades and trade all day and go long and short and wanting to do different kinds of strategies. And I, and I wasn't profitable. But some days it wasn't. Some days it wasn't. And I'd make money and lose money. And, and, I, and, I, and it was just the biggest days I ever had. And this is probably how I logically came to the conclusion. The biggest days I ever had trading was when I ever did one trade and one stop. And then it just dawned on me. When I go back and look at my results and say, wait a minute, there's, you know, this is like ironic or not really. Okay. And it goes back to the common sense. If you're only doing one trade a day, you should have very little loss in. If you're looking for the same thing every day, you should be consistent. If you don't find it, you don't trade. I know that's a bummer some days for people that want to trade all the time, but guess what? That's, that's how you end up making money in the long run, in the long haul, in the market. Some days you just don't do anything if your criteria isn't met. But if, if someone, if you went, woke up tomorrow morning, and you did some fantastic trade, okay, and you made $10,000, okay, say you took this thing here, say you had the money to risk it, say it dropped two bucks, and you had 5,000 shares, you would have made 10 grand. Now, where would that have had to go? Let's look at it. 27.78. It would have had to go here, not that far away. So if you had shorted it here, look, the low of this tail, 20, look at that. Yeah, look at that. It actually would have been a target. Now, it's flipped on the day and I got out of it, but look. So actually, if you had shorted this here, where I shorted this in the day, here's the daily chart. This is where the short entry was. Could this have fallen all the way down here? Absolutely, yes. It wasn't an amazing gap, so I got out of it early and it didn't go all the way down here. It didn't get here someday, probably. If it had the market with it, it would have gotten down here, but it would have been a better gap, a better rated gap. Anyways, this is a $2 move. So if you had taken 5,000 shares of this in a $2 move, quickly, 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 somebody tell me what would have been the risk. If a 30 cent stop with 5,000 shares, what is your monetary risk? Somebody, anybody, let's see how good you people are on that. This is the kind of stuff I teach you. You got to know how to do it. I mean, this is just, you shouldn't need to even think. If you have to think for more than two seconds, you got to get a calculator. And no one's answering me. We're going to be here all night. If you risk 30 cents times 5,000 shares, what's your monetary risk? If the stock had dropped $2 and we're talking about making 10 grand and you have 5,000 shares, what's your risk? Oh, my Lanta. Nobody. Hit and run needs more than two seconds. Hit and run. Hit and run. It's only 30 cents times 5,000. It's 30 cents times 5,000. What's three times five? Here, what's three times five? Quickly, three times five. Forget the zero. Just break it down, break it down, break it down. What's three times five? Yes, 1,500. Perfect. Take out the zero if it makes it hard. Yes, very good. So if the stock had dropped $2, you would have made $10,000 risking $1,500. Is that a good trade? The answer is yes. Does it happen some days? The answer is yes. But you would never have made that if you didn't risk $1,500, which you might not have done if you didn't really see that the move was going to go there. You would have been worried about losing $1,500. So the point is that this predictability, I guess, of the directional bias, which is to the down move here, okay, which is what this trade was, is what is what helps you take the risk and make the trade. Now, getting back to what I was saying, let's say this had gone two bucks from the entry and you made $10,000. If you had no idea how to do this, not a clue, you would think that you knew how to do it. And tomorrow's Thursday, you would get up, you would make the 10000 then Friday, you would be looking to make another 10000 or some other fantastic trade. And what people usually do after they have an amazing trade is they try to replicate it. They try to replicate it over and over and over again. And, and, and they end up giving back the 10000 
and then losing, giving back the 10,000 profit and then actually losing in the trade, trying to replicate what they did over and over again, not knowing what they did, or maybe thinking that they knew what they did, but they don't. So how do they know? Because they couldn't replicate it. This is the trickery of trading and what kind of like people never really get out of it. I mean, I, I have had the business now for four years and been teaching people and I can't tell you how many people tell me the same stories. It's one of these things that people think that they know how to trade and they know what to do, but they're not profitable. How do you, how do you know you know what to do when you're, when you're doing it consistently and you can do it? When, whether it's January or February, whether the market's rallying or falling, whether it's 2014 or 2016 or 2020, you are, you are, you are seeing the trades and you're doing it over and over again. It's the consistency. The point I'm trying to make is anybody can get up on any given day and have a great trade and make money. But you're not going to be profitable and make six figures over the course of a year or months and weeks or days or be able to go the distance to quit your job and do it full time or do it part time or even rely or have the conviction to take that risk of 1500 bucks to make that kind of money on any given day. Now, this didn't do it that day, but another day, another example I'd show you. We're going to look at the market in a minute. But the point I'm trying to say is that it's, it, it means learning it and really getting it and really having a consistency because that's how you make the money. Anyone can do something and make money and have a good day. It's the replication of it. And I have made it a science. I mean, quite frankly, 26 points is an awful lot of things. It's an awful lot of things to look at it. But if I ever could look at 260 points and never get it wrong, I would do it. I would get up at 6 a.m. every day and never take a loss. And then guess what? My risk would be, you know, $10,000 a trade instead of 1000 or 1500 bucks. You, you, you know, you, you, it's just it's just not understanding that it's the accuracy, okay? It's the accuracy and getting it that allows you to take the size. But if you can prove to yourself that you can, for however many days or however many re weeks, risk a buck or 100 shares and do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, you will then say, yes, I know this works and I can do it. And I will start to bump it up and start to risk more. So it's about the conviction. And I have a high level of conviction in what I do. And, and, and I've been doing this for eight years. But I did create it myself. I think that helps with the conviction that I have. And gaps are a sophisticated way to look at something in the chart. Many, many people don't understand gaps and misread them. Now, let's look at the market here. Whew, look at this close we had here today. Unbelievable. Does anyone have any questions here before I look at the market? Wow, what a day in the market. So getting back to what I was saying, the selling, the shorting, okay? It's selling action is panicking. Now, if you didn't watch the news in the last two weeks, which maybe you were busy, it's been the holiday and stuff, maybe you missed it, but probably you saw it somewhere, somewhere on the news of the net. Uh, there was a, a vote in Great Britain, and there was a news reaction that created a gap down in the spot. This is, go up here again, you see the symbol here to the left, is the ETF in the market. So here we were the night before. This is on the 23rd. We actually closed at 210.81. Boom. The next day, I think this was Friday. Yeah, it was a Friday. We open at 203.63. So there you see it. Now we're talking about gas. So we closed at 210.81. Let's just figure it out exactly. 210.81. And we opened 203.63. Okay, so we got down seven dollars and eighteen cents. So if you knew my system, what would you do? You get up in the morning, you roll out of bed, you see this. You would see it way before the open. You wouldn't have seen it at night. Actually, we closed at night up. So you would have had to get up early. Anyways, the expectation was a certain way for the vote, it turned around. Market gap down pretty big then in the morning, and guess what? It created panic. It rallied hard first, the panic came in, and then fell into itself in the afternoon. It followed through the next day. On the Monday, we gapped down again. Not as big of a gap down, but still gapped down, and we sold off hard then. Broke 200. This is on Monday the 27th. After the weekend, a follow-through continuation of the gap from Friday, the reaction of the news. And you will have this in the market. You will have this in stocks. Stocks will gap for news, for earnings, for anything. I'm going to feel like it. Somebody could go on TV right now and say something, and something could gap. It's the idea of the panic and the sell-off, okay? 
Now, I want to show you. This is, again, why I like shorting, because you can see here what transpires. I mean, literally, this is a big move to the downside that happened very quickly. Now, we reversed it because the people that are in charge of the market, the power money people, the institutional money, came in and bought the market back up again and bought it today right after this reaction. But this was a strong reaction that if you were long the market or long a stock or long anything at all, you might have gotten scared like a scaredy cat, not knowing about the Brexit or Great Britain or anything else. And you might have got up in the morning, been down in positions or worried or stressed or crazy, and you might have sold. And this is the thing that I'm looking for every day. Now, now, take away this and pretend this is a stock or anything. This is what I mean by the profitability that's involved with the shorting. Okay. Because even from the open on the Friday through the low of the of the Monday, okay, that's a big move. And that's not even including where it closed the night before in the Thursday gap. Okay. So you have people panic and you could have shorted the market here on Monday. On the on the second day down. It's just one of these things where if you know what to look for, you can predict the move. It's I'm very good at predicting what something's going to do before it does it. And quite frankly, people, that's how you make money. If that no one makes any money if it's after the fact. And if it does, you make a little bit of money and you're and you got to be out quickly and you're scalping every single thing that you do. And I, I, a lot of people do do that. But it's able. It's, are you able to predict it? Does it mean that you'll predict it right every time? No. That's you know no one can. But I do predict it right a lot. And I predict the market will make it up high and it's going to do it. It's way way late, but it is going to do it. So it's. You know, you, you have to be able to predict the price action to take the trade before the momentum and move happens. And what I've found is that gaps are so specialized, and many people have absolutely no idea how to trade them, don't pay attention to them. If they do even notice them, they don't pay attention to them correctly and do not give them the weight that is critical for in order to make money. And don't get the entries of the moves like I do into the beginning part of the day in the sell-off. And that's really where the profit right, it, it is. Because you don't have to be in something long, and you shouldn't be in something till four o'clock. And the longer you're in a position, the more you're at risk. Again, that's common sense too. If you take a trade at 9:35 and you're in it till 3:55, anything could happen. You're better off getting in at 9:35 and out at 9:40. Do you know what I'm saying? Obviously. And then if a new thing happens or this thing happens, you're not really affected by it. It doesn't really affect you negatively. Daryl's asking about gold. Give me a give me a ticker symbol on gold. GLD. What do you want me to look at? Give me just give me something you want me to look at. I mean, there's so many different ones here, but what do you want me to look at? <laughs> just something that you're in right now, or just what? I haven't looked at any of these in a while, but I'll look at this one here now. Oh, R R R G L D. And anyone else ask me questions? Netflix? Okay, now. This, this doesn't look bad at all here, actually. This looks fine. So this chart has made a correction here. It it's it's just done it though. I mean I I mean this is just done. It has to hold here. This has to hold here. It has to hold here. Here. This is where it has to hold. In an ideal world, this holds 73. Otherwise, it's not going to be right again. Uh, Netflix. So that looks higher, but it's got to hold there. And it's just done it. So it's, you know, it's just done it, literally. So it has to hold. Netflix looks like a piece of crap here. This is a, this is, trying to situate its life here. Geez, I haven't looked at this in a while. <clears throat> what are the earnings on this? Somebody look it up. This chart is still in an uptrend, but it is struggling to save its life. So I don't I don't know why this doesn't look better other than the fact that the market has made it over the high. This could go either way in here. It's still in an uptrend, I'll tell you that, but this should look a heck of a lot better here. This is trying to figure its life out here. Let me go back here. This is the beginning of the year. I don't, I don't know when these earnings are. It'll be interesting to see. I, this is going to be something, something in the next earning, critical. 
I, I don't know what. So in other words, what do I mean? I mean, this could break or it could finally look much, much better than it does right now. This doesn't look, this doesn't look as good as it should, but it's still in an uptrend. Let me put it that way. The next earnings are going to be critical in this, whenever they are. It's going to do something significant. Either it's going to break itself or it's going to turn around and all of a sudden look like a buy again. I wouldn't buy this here today, but I wouldn't short it either. If you're long it, you're in the right direction. I wouldn't be short it, but it doesn't look as good as it could. But remember, the market is, the market's been back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I mean, unless, unless, unless you're in like Amazon, Amazon here. It's, you know, it's been hot. Look at this today. Oh, my Atlanta. <gasps> this has gone right to 750. Holy cow. I just gave an option call on this the other day. Galahad, did you do it? <laughs> Unbelievable. Galahad, did you do the option call that I gave on the Amazon? You're on the list. So, so here, this is like breaking out. And it's, it's been hard for people. You did do it? Wow. Good for you. Yeah, you're going to get this to the strike price probably by the end of the week. So I made a call on this just two days ago. Two days ago I did it, I think. Was it yesterday? Yeah. 750 calls and it's going to get there. It's going to be through the number. It's going to be through the strike price way before the, the expiration. This was, a, this was a nice call. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make, though, is that, and this was just a call. This wasn't even, this wasn't even earnings. I just saw it. I was like, ah, ah, and then I saw it. Wow, I have to email everybody and see who did that. So Galahad did it. Good job. Anyways, the point is, though, that, that many, many people, with the exception of a few, few picks, are not wanting to go long. They're like, ah. I mean, even though the market has recovered from the Brexit, it's been hard for people to, it's been hard for people to have conviction in the staying power, staying with the stock and going long. It. People feel too, uh, what's the word, too nervous. Too nervous or like nervous Nelly. And that's why that sell-off, that hard sell-off even happened the following through the continuation day into the Monday of the Brexit. People are like, ah, people are too nervous. I mean, regular people, okay? The power of money is in. And, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I called it. I called it on Monday after I looked at this. I said, listen, listen, people, the only way to get out of this is if the powers of B come in and buy up the market again and we gap up. And literally it did it. It did it so aggressively that I was almost, almost surprised. And even today. But I'm not surprised because the people are in the market long and a big, big time that people, the big money people. But regular people get scared and people don't know what to do. And so people are like back and forth, back and forth. So the commitment has been hard this year for people to go long and stay with trade and left something like Amazon. But I will tell you, if you got something like that, or you got some of the other high flyers, I mean, they're just going to the moon. And when the market makes over the high, they're going to even go more to the moon. So it's been hard for people to commit in either direction this year, longs or shorts. And it's, if you don't have something like I have, it's, it's been a tough year to day trade. I mean, I got, I got to tell you, if you don't have something like I have where you were doing one trade a day, you were very disciplined, you're focused, and you're doing it, it's been a tough year to day trade because you can't figure out what the hell to do every day. Do you go long? Do you go short? What do you do? Do I, do I get out? Do I scout? Do I take it down? Do I need the market? Do I stay in all day? Do I get out quickly? I mean, you know, it's, this market has not been easy to read. I have done a good job reading it, but I couldn't have predicted Brexit. Who the hell could have predicted Brexit? I looked at this the night before. We almost made a new high. Let's go look at the post market because I watched it train. It was on the 23rd. I never in my life saw something like this happen in the night. In the nighttime. But then it was the expectation that didn't follow through. Here it was. Fuck, this is crazy. This was all at night. This wasn't even in the morning. And I've seen moves like this in the morning in the economic news, but this was at night. I never saw something like this at night in the market. Never in all the years I've traded. The market was getting bought, 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 up all into the night. Look at that. 212 was a high. So obviously, everyone thought them, the market was gapping up after hours, and then it gapped down. And so there was the sell-off, and this is the shot. So the shot came in in the gap, and it sold it off and followed through on Monday. And this is how you make money, shorting. But this very well could have opened this way in the morning if the vote had gone different, but it didn't. And a lot of it had to do with expectations. So people right now don't know what to expect. They're in fear. They're in panic. They lack commitment. They're not sure what to do. People are waiting the sidelines. But once the market gets over the high, then people are going to be committed again. And it's going to be a great time to trade. And I'm telling you, I, I, I don't see us going back up to this level and not getting over the high. The next time we go there, and I said this for the last three months, six months, we're going to get it over. We're going to get up over. We're going to get up over it. Anytime we even get anywhere near the previous high at 213.78, this five, we're going to get, we're going to go right on top over it. So when that happens, today, tomorrow, the next week, the next month, it's going to happen this summer, I believe. I, we are too close now to doing it, not to do it. So 
the bottom line is when that happens, people will be recommitted. There'll be a lot of volatility in the market. And in both directions, downside and upside. Now, listen, as I say something very important, and I ask the question, shorts are still going to really roll too then, because what's going to happen is people are going to want to trade again that have been not trading and waiting. People and trainers that don't want to do anything at all that aren't trading. So people then will get in and want to go short and go long again. And right now, people don't know what to do and they're scared. In either direction, they don't know what to do. So when the market starts to make sense again to people, people will get back to trading actively again. There will be more volume and volatility in the market, even in the summer, and because of the earnings season, and because of the third quarter, once the market makes it over the high and makes sense again. And then you will have more shorts and more longs and more opportunity in both directions to do it. But again, I still like to do the shorts. But the other reason you will have the shorts is because people will dump crap that they are in long, okay? They will sell it, make the shorts move, get the short opportunities for the gaps with us that people will sell stuff. If the earnings reports turn out to be that the stock gaps and they raise 20 points or more, people will sell crap. Then they will take their money and go long stuff that's not crap, like Amazon. So you will have better down moves once the market makes it over the high because people will dump crap to buy good stuff because people only have a certain amount of money. If you have even a million dollars, you got a million dollars, you want to invest in stuff that's moving, stuff that looks good, like Amazon in the market. If you're in a crap and it's not moving, even if you're long it, you'll sell it. It'll make the sell off and you'll take your money and take the million dollars you have and you'll buy something good. So everything is not making sense right now. And this is why, but it, it does to me because, because it just does. But I'm just saying it's going to be better once you get up over the high for the longs and the short. And it's just going to have more opportunity all over the place. You've got to take the right stock. And if you can't, you, you can't make any money anyway. So. Um, the market is irrational longer than you can be solvent? I don't know. Maybe for you, Daryl, not for me. I mean, you don't, you can't, to be solvent, you just don't risk more than you can afford to lose. That's how you stay solvent. You don't risk more than you can afford to lose. Common sense. That's how you stay solvent. You don't, you can't blow up your account to, to, to get some huge trade. That's why, I mean, I'm saying you must do it. Even if it's risking a dollar a day, prove to yourself that you can. And then when the setups come, after you prove that you can, you up the risk. But you must stay solvent. Otherwise, you won't last in the market. You won't last in the market a day or a week or a month or a year. Solvency has to do with being, you know, responsible, actually, which I find, you know, I try to help people be responsible. I mean, when people take trades in the room that I don't call or don't look good to me, I, I, I get upset with them because I want to see people do well. I don't want to see people lose. I want people to do well and I want people to make money. And there are people making money with me and doing very well, but they listen to what I say and, and they don't deviate from the system. It took me three plus years to figure this out. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. If I say AAL is what we're doing today or do nothing, and Scalp it, follow what I'm saying, follow my lead. If you held this longer today, it did go 10 cents to the target. But what if it wouldn't have? And look what happened today. What happened today in the afternoon actually was what I thought might happen in the morning. It flipped. You see that? It went up over the high. It did go up over 28. And when that happened, it was a bust. So it was a morning short as a scalp. And I saw that it would probably do this. And I didn't know what time. So I said, I'm in and I'm out quick. Do you see? Again, I'm really good at predicting what something's going to do. So this wasn't a good enough gap to follow through all day. But it was a short in the morning, and it was out. All right, any questions from anyone? Just, 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 just a review. The class is July 16th and 17th. I'm running a special for July 4th through the end of this week, giving people a couple extra days coming back from the holiday. If you want to sign up, I'm giving 20% off the class. The only time I'm doing it this year. It's actually the price of the class, the old price of the class from last year in 2015. So for those of you who've been following you a while and you want to do it, it saves you a thousand bucks. No exceptions after Friday. So if you want to sign up, email me. And if you want to trial to the training room, you can email me too. You can do a trial to the room uh, next week before the class. It's just that you wouldn't get the 20% off. Normal price of the class is $49.99 and it's well worth it because it teaches you how to trade. And replicate these trades that I do over and over and over and over and over again. And that's what you need to learn how to do to make money consistently. Otherwise, you take the trade, like I said, you make $10,000. You never know how to take that trade again. 
and you will get back that money and way more trying to figure it out. And 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 and, you, and this is you know it's been one of these years where you really were tested. It it wasn't about luck this year in the market, at least not so far the first six months of the year. Half the year is over more than that. You still got time left to make money, and if you're trading some other system and losing, you have plenty of time to turn it around. Six months is enough time to turn around your year, no matter what you're doing, and and make something of the year. Okay. If you're down for the year trading some other system, you got plenty of time to turn it around. Okay. So think about what I said. Email me, and if you know Paul, email him too. Good questions today about sizing. There's other stuff too. And you can go to YouTube, subscribe to my YouTube. I post all my videos and stuff on there. I'll do a video tonight in the market. Gorgeous market here today. Fabulous market. And Amazon is amazing too. So good job, Galahad, for taking the Amazon option. And uh, any questions? Any questions from anyone else? Thank you, Online Trader Essentials. Thanks for having me. Have a good day, everyone. Have a good evening.